Hello, in this video I will show you how to install Ubuntu 25.10. Before I begin, I have some requirements. You need to know the key to access the boot menu. If you don't know it, search for it on YouTube or the internet. You must have disabled secure boot in the BIOS because this video does not include how to do it with secure boot. If you don't know how to do it, search on YouTube or the internet. Most importantly, you must have a USB flash drive with at least 8 gigabytes of storage space, and it must not be important to you because one of the procedures in this video will delete everything on the USB drive, so make sure it is not important. Listen, watch, and do everything very carefully because you risk deleting Windows and everything you have on your computer. That said, let's start with this tutorial. First, disable fast startup on Windows so that you can still modify and do things on the Windows partition on Ubuntu. Search for and open control panel. Then click on system and security. Then click on power options. Then click on the text. Choose what the power button does. Unfortunately, I don't have this option, but if you do, you should disable it. To do this, click on the text, change settings that are currently unavailable. Uncheck the option and click save. Another thing is to disable BitLocker which is present if you have purchased a new computer with Windows 11 or have reinstalled Windows. To do this, open Settings, then click on Privacy and Security. There you should see the Device Encryption option. Click on it and disable Device Encryption, accepting all warnings. Decryption will take between a few minutes and several hours, depending on how much storage you have used and its speed. Now it's time to allocate some of our storage space to Ubuntu. To do this, search for and open Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Select a large partition, usually the Windows partition, then right-click and choose Shrink Volume. In Enter, enter the amount of space to shrink in MB. Enter at least 26,000 or, as in my case, 30,000 because the minimum for Ubuntu is 25 gigabytes. After that, click on Shrink and you should have a black partition labeled Unallocated. Now it's time to create the installation USB stick. All the websites and tools are linked in the description. On this website, scroll down and choose to download the Ubuntu 25.10 ISO file. This is the program that will write the ISO image to the USB. Scroll down and choose to download a version. I choose the portable one. After everything has downloaded, open Rufus and insert your USB flash drive. After that, click on Select and select the Ubuntu ISO image. Under Partition Scheme, select GPT if you have a modern computer with a UFI BIOS. If you have an older computer with a classic BIOS, select MBR. If you don't know whether you have a classic BIOS or modern UEFI, search for and open System Information. Under BIOS Mode, if it says UEFI, use GPT, but if it says something else, use MBR. After selecting your scheme, click on Start and accept all warnings. The process will take a few minutes, depending on the speed of your USB stick. When you have finished everything, close everything and turn off your computer. Then, turn it on and select the USB stick from the boot menu. It may have a strange name such as Linpus Lite. You should see a screen like this. Select the first option, Try, or Install Ubuntu. But if you encounter problems such as graphics bugs, restart your computer and choose the Ubuntu Safe Graphics option. Here, you just need to configure everything to your liking. You must have an internet connection. Continue until you reach the disk configuration section. Here's the crucial part. I'm going to do a dual boot, but you can choose if you only want Ubuntu, in which case it will delete everything completely and you'll only have Ubuntu. In my case, I prefer to do it manually, so select Manual Installation and click Next. Be very careful here, check your storage and partitions very carefully. Select the partition labeled Free Space that you created in Windows. You may see a slightly different size, after which you should click on the button with a plus sign. I recommend creating a swap partition because some programs on Linux simply require it. As for size, I recommend half the size of your RAM, but you can also give it more. In my case, I want to create a 4 GB partition so you can write 4000 or be more precise and write 4096. Under Used As, select the Swap option and then click OK. Select the partition for Ubuntu again, click on the plus sign again, do not change the size and under Used As, leave Extension 4 or select Extension 4. 
You can try other file systems if you like, but I leave it on extension 4. Under mount point, choose the slash and no others, then click on OK. If you want, you can create a separate boot partition for Ubuntu or leave it together with the Windows partition. I leave it together. After that, click Next and continue with your configuration. There will be a screen that will show you if you agree with your partition configuration, etc. If you have made any mistakes, you can close and reopen the installer and start over. However, if everything is correct and you agree, click on the green Install button and the actual installation will begin. You will have to wait 10 or 20 minutes or even longer depending on the speed of your computer and your internet connection. I had some strange graphics glitches but anyway, in the end you should have a screen like this. Click on the green button that says Restart Now. It will also tell you to remove the USB stick. Remove it and click Enter. At the end, you should have a screen like this. If you don't see Grub, go into the BIOS and change the boot order, setting Ubuntu as the first option. Here, you can choose whether to boot Ubuntu, Windows, or something else. You will need to do this small setup. Click Next for everything. Another thing I highly recommend is to open additional drivers to see which drivers you have, which is common for users with NVIDIA GPUs. Select the most up-to-date ones, and finally, open Software Updater to see if there are any updates to be made. As you can see, everything is fine. As you can see, I can browse the internet without any problems, and I can even play games like Roblox without any issues. Anyway, that's really all there is to it. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell. Thank you very much for watching and for your time, but I think it's time to say goodbye. I wish you a great day. Goodbye!